The, the strength of the, the community or open, of the open source, you sometimes can make big jumps ahead. CVCRM is a software system. Technically a constituent relationship management system. It's an extendable phone book. <laughs> it's a database. It's a database. It's a, an open source version of Salesforce. Designed for non-profits. It is the heart and soul of an organisation that, that is uh, donor-driven. You've got contact management and activity recording and mailings and um, cases and email and SMS and membership stuff or event stuff and grants and blah, 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 blah. All sorts of stuff around a team in a format that's the same for everybody who's looking at it, basically. That's the generic thing. What's special about CVCRM is that it's open source and community-based. So the limits are whatever energy you want to put into it. really nice welcoming community actually. Every six to twelve months come down to an event like this, catch up with old friends now. Today when I had that question about the events, um, it was so nice because everybody chipped in and like you could mm. try this and that and I was presented with sort of three different options for my um, problem. The development you do for your organisation, it's out there. If somebody else can use it for their organisation, just go ahead and use it, or build on it. You're free to change it, you're free to make it different, you're free to put your data anywhere. We wanted to be able to just be in more control of all the data around the artists that we use, the contacts that we have at our various funders. We're a society that's been going for nearly 200 years, so there's a lot of proprietary technology in use. One of the things I like about um, open source technologies I don't have to ask permission to try something, whereas if there's a bill, I have to ask the person who's got the money. For an organisation like Amnesty, using CVCRM means that they can manage their petitions, their donations, their activists, their groups, their yearly member meeting, all in one system. It's really important that they own their data themselves and that they're free to follow whatever route they want to follow, but then they'd have to invest energy. For Amnesty it was a quite deliberate choice to go and use an open source uh, tool. We didn't want to be stuck with uh, high license prices um, or forced uh, upgrades where we weren't ready for. Um, and in a way we want to, to be able to move at our own pace. The sprint approach allows us to work together as a team to say this is what we want to achieve and this is how we're going to do it. The budget will allow for 11 sprints and with that budget we will make it better. One sprint is two days when uh, developer, CV developers are coming over to our office and then we assign the priority issues, discuss them and we work at really focused, we do some really focused work. If it needs to be built from scratch you pay but if you can start from something that is an extension that is already out there, you can just start using it. It's been around since 2004, CVCRM. The way it moves along and, and, and has kept up with the pace of change, because it's open source, over the years, different organisations have funded changes and then that change goes into the wider system. That happens fairly often, that we develop extensions for one client and then we can reuse it in, in another environment. I think that's easier to explain to an NGO who, who usually you know, has this idea of like a, a common good and, and, and working for a better kind of future or whatever. We don't 
want to build something that we own and then sell, right? We want to be paid for building stuff, but then there's really no reason why other people shouldn't be able to use it. And this way, we're building a better and better and better and better software that everybody can use. This type of approach actually works really well. That's what open source is for. <laughs>